Hey everyone, and welcome back to CTF Cookbook. This is Return to Shellcode, an essential pwn technique. Um, in this challenge, we're going to be creating our own assembly instructions and injecting them into a running process and then executing those instructions. And so in the last challenge, we were able to do a ret to win. So we were able to jump to a win function, but sometimes in a CTF challenge, there isn't a win function. And normally in those, the goal is to get shell. And so shell code comes from the word for, you know, just shell code. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to compile some code that'll spawn a shell um, and then we'll execute it. Um, this is an example program for doing it. Um, by default, uh, it's hard to actually execute shell code because uh, there's modern protections built into binaries. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about all these protections more in the future. Uh, but for this specific example, we had to disable something called on NX, uh, non-executable stack. Uh, and this is the flag for doing that when we compile. Um, but anyway, so for this challenge, uh, we have an executable stack, which is important. But jumping into the challenge, uh, for this, we're going to define a buffer, 128 bytes. We're going to get an info leak. So an info leak is just the leak of an address somewhere. Uh, we're going to be using these a lot in the future. Uh, but for this case, we just get a printf, which just tells us where that buffer is. So it says, it says the buffer is located at percent %p, and it's giving us the address of buffer1. And then it's going to do a gets on buffer1. So like I said, when there isn't an obvious flag in the bi uh, binary or the challenge, it usually means we need to get shell, and then we're, going, we're able to print out the flag that's on disk on the remote server. So our goal is to get uh, shell. Because non-executable stack uh, is disabled, uh, we're able to actually send over uh, raw CPU instructions and put those into buffer one, and then we're going to jump to buffer one using that ret to win strategy we talked about earlier, where we're gonna overwrite the return address. Um, so to see what this looks like, I have a little solve script. Uh, we're going to import pwn like we always do. We're going to load the elf, start the process. In this case, I'm doing something called pwn context binary equals elf. Basically this tells pwn tools what type of architecture your system or your binary is using. Uh, for this, it's AMD 64, uh, but it's nice. It tells you, you know, if it's 32 bits or 64 bits, or if you're using MIPS or some other custom architecture, uh, by setting this context, uh, pwn tools is much smarter and uh, kind of generates the correct shell code for you. You can manually specify it, but it's nice just to have pwn tool do everything for you. This is how we're gonna generate shellcode. So again, it used to be that you would go onto Shellstorm or some other websites and you'd manually download shellcode, uh, but you don't have to do that anymore. Um, you can actually just ask Pwn Tools to generate shellcode for you. And we'll look at the shellcode in a second. But again, shellcode is just assembly instructions that spawn a shell. Um, so we're gonna print out the shellcode just to see what it looks like. And then we're going to uh, compile that into raw shellcode. So this is the assembly shellcode. I should label these better, but this is just the assembly strings, like pushes and pops and stuff assembly. And then this is like the raw bytecode. Next, we're gonna parse out that info leak. So the process or the program is telling us where that buffer is located on the stack. So we're going to receive uh, that string, the buffer is located at, and then when we do a p receive line, it's going to read that number out. Uh, and so then we can parse that, that string and we'll get out the address of that buffer. And then we print it out in hex. Uh, all that's left is to send over the shellcode to the process and then jump to it. So we're going to take the shellcode, we're going to make sure that we fill up the whole entire buffer, so the buffer is 128 bytes, so we're just going to end up add a bunch of null bytes. We could also add something called NOPS, uh, which is also very popular. You can use a technique called NOPS setting, which we might talk about later. Um, there's also that stack variable, um, which we're going to talk again about in a later video, uh, but we just need to make sure we overflow that. And then we have the return address. So in the last example, we did a ret to win, so we jumped to the win function, but now we're essentially defining our own win function, and we're going to jump to that shellcode. So we're jumping to the buffer address, which is where we put the shellcode. And then after that, we jump to interactive. So to see what this looks like, let's do, oops, let's clear this. Make it a little bit bigger. We'll do Python 3, so, oops, solve.py. So a lot's happening. Uh, we're starting the process. It's going to tell us all the protections. Uh, for this one, we disabled the canary. Uh, we disabled non-executable stack. There's no pi. And this is also kind of related to non-executable stack. We'll be talking about all these protections in a lot more detail, but basically, no, we've disabled pretty much every protection uh, to do this uh, exercise. This is the shell code. <clears throat> so this is the kind of custom code that we're injecting into the process. Uh, if you're new to assembly, uh, this is probably a lot. But basically, what's going to happen is all this following code, what it's doing is it's setting up so that we can make this call. This is a syscall, and we're going to be executing bin shell. Um, 
So it looks like a lot. Um, if you're not new to assembly, I'd recommend maybe doing some tutorials or something. Uh, it is very useful, but basically you can see it's just pushing stuff onto the stack. It's moving variables around, doing some more pushing, moving registers, uh, setting everything up so that at the very end, we can make a uh, assembly call called syscall, which basically tells the operating system that, hey, I want you to execute the program bin shell, which is our goal. Um, then uh, it does this, uh, the buffer is located at, and we parse out that variable. And so it, we find out that the buffer that we're about to inject our shellcode into is at this address. Uh, addresses on the stack usually start, if you're on 64-bit, they usually start with a 7FF. Um, so we can see that this is a stack variable. Uh, after that, we sent the shellcode, then the shellcode is returning, sorry, the, pro, or the function is returning to the shellcode. And at this point, we should have shell. So we can test it, we can say, who am I? And we can see we are root. Uh, which is pretty cool. And we can do ls. At this point, normally there would be a flag file. Um, so I can just make one real quick. We'll do flag ctf. We'll send that to flag.txt. So at this point, you would normally just go cat flag.txt and you would get out the flag. So that was a return to shellcode, uh, which is, a, again, a very useful technique. Um, anyways, thanks for watching. If you'd like to download the challenge files, the binaries, the solve scripts, they're available on ctfcookbook.com. It'll be below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.